Look at somebody and say, I am unstoppable. Whatever you thought you lost, whatever is taken from you, God will compensate you. All things work together for good to those who are called according to his what? Purpose. All things. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If you borrow money to do business, that means you took someone's money to create wealth. It's allowed. That one is different. Using other people's money, other people's money, OPM. You go to the bank, you borrow money to invest in something that will create more money. But when you borrow money to buy shoe, borrow money to buy clothes, borrow money to pay school fees, borrow money to buy books for your children, you will not even have enough relaxation in your mind to check what your children are doing in the school because you are so you are a servant to the one who gave you the money so people form the habit okay hold my wrapper or take this one hold it you know there are people that lend money in the city those money lenders, the most dangerous people ever existed. Because their money is not normal. Oftentimes, people who borrow that money never paid. So, whatever they have left as a collateral will go. That is not the life God wants us to live. You say, what will I do? They, they said, if I, don't, if I don't buy three goats, buy two chicken, buy this one, they will not bury my father. Let them live with the dead body until you are ready. It is an error to borrow to, to bury. You, you are not hearing me, are you? Check everyone who has borrowed money to bury a dead relation. They suffer more. Even to pay that money becomes a problem. It's like the spirit of death will say, we will go with this one. The same thing, to borrow money to marry is the worst thing you can do in your life. See, it is better you wear the ashwebi that you wore in somebody's wedding in December last year to do wedding and live a normal life than to borrow to feed people. Who told you that feeding people will make your marriage succeed? Who told you that cutting cake will make your marriage to succeed? That buying, you must sew gown. Who told you you must sew gown? Are you sure I'm talking to us tonight? It is not necessary. Do you know that you can wait in the evening like this? I can wait you. In, on Tuesday meeting like this. You just walk out enter. We will wait. I will wait you. There is no scriptural instruction that you must marry on Saturday or marry on Sunday. I've been to many places where people, weddings are conducted Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You don't have money. You are looking for a haul of 500. You now borrow trusting God. See, it is poverty that makes people think that when you give birth to a child, 
you begin to use the child to collect money. No, it's, it's poverty mentality. Are you here? It's poverty mentality. For you to prepare wedding, expecting that people are going to give you. So when they give you, you will not pay payback. Don't prepare wedding for people to give you. Prepare wedding to marry. If you don't have money, food for the people, come on Sunday and go your house. Nobody will query you. There is no query. When the yoke is on you, you will do everything. You will even borrow from your enemy so that your wedding was the best. When the yoke is on you, you do things to impress people. You are not even doing the wedding so that you will honor God. You are doing the wedding to impress people. You print 1,000 cards. To give to who? You do seven steps of cake. How many people will eat it? Listen. When we were dead, we didn't give people a gift to. This gift now came, came in. It was not in our time when we were dead. Now, people come to you to help you to mourn one of your loved ones who passed away. As they are going, they are going with gifts. So, who killed the person? Those who do it have the money to do it. Must you join them? The yoke of poverty creates a mentality in your mind that makes you try to be where you ought not to be, borrow to be where you ought not to be. One of the things I found abroad is that you hardly see anybody abroad who is not a debtor. That is what I It is their system. The system makes you to owe. Every hidden destiny helper be made visible in the name of Jesus. You buy telephone is on credit. Your chair is on credit. Your fridge is on credit. Your car is on credit. So by the time the month is finished, because all those credits, it is direct debit. They collect the money from you. So when you are, your loved one abroad is telling you I have no money, you say, are you not earning salary? The salary has finished. indebtedness and poverty. We're going to destroy this yoke if I hear somebody say amen. amen. He said the borrower is a servant. The borrower is a servant. You know what happens in our school here? There are, it's a yoke. They will bring their children from one school. In that school, they are owing. Then they will come to our school. They will pay the first term, pay half of the second term, move their children to another school for th third term. They owe that side, owe here. There are people, that is their system. Their children will attend five schools before they graduate because of this yoke. This thing I'm talking, you know, being calm and talking is killing many people. Has destroyed homes. Affected marriages. Why? Indebtedness. Creates an atmosphere of lying. That when people ask, your ask after you, your son will pick the phone and say, Papa travel to village. You were there. You are the, you are the one that told your son to lie. That, now, when you told him to lie, you travel to the village. When the child begins to be a professional liar tomorrow, 
you are the one that laid the foundation. What made you to say you traveled? It's because the person calling you, you are owing the person. Because you're a servant to the man or the woman you are owing. Somebody say, Lord, help me. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent maketh what? Aha. Uh -huh. He becomes poor who has a slack hand. What's a slack hand? Laziness. One, one powerful instrument of the yoke of poverty is laziness. You know what laziness does? It's not that you are physically lazy. No. It brings you to a point of procrastination. Pushing what you ought to do now into the future. And that future will come. You push it into the future. Making you to believe that no, this, this is not the kind of job somebody like me. Who are you? You don't have. Your children are hungry. Rent you have not paid. And they ask you to come and carry block. That, that is, this building is under construction. And it's a five-story building. And the work, the person that is building has the money is going to, this work is going to last for the next 10 months. And you are to carry cement or carry block. And you, at the end, you get 2005 on Monday. 2005 on Tuesday. Wednesday. For labor. I'm talking for labor. 4,000 for labor. Now. Good. Okay. Assuming, let's say, let bring it down. Let's say 3,000 for labor. I'm bringing, let me say, how much are you paying for labor? 4,000 for labor. Now. Okay. You collect 4,000 on, from four, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, six days. Four times six is what? 24. For one week. Two weeks is 48. Four weeks is what? 96,000. Which civil servant is any 96,000? No, tell me. And you are looking at see i am see your degree means nothing to poverty you say i read i read engineering oh yeah go and engineer we are talking about the realities what poverty mentality does is that what will give you money you commonize it and you begin to look for those who will give you. You begin to look for one business. There's a business mind. I have a business idea. If I can get 300,000. You cannot function. If you do not know what to do with 10,000. Are you here? One of my little girls here came, came yesterday. No, on Sunday. And presented to me. Her profit for one month. And she's selling cards. Recharge card. She began with 7,000. And increased until she got to 27,000. She buys a card of 40,000 every day and sell more than, sell that 40,000 card every day. And she began to save and save so, for one month, she has saved at something thousand, excluding her capital. And she brought it to raise an altar. She brought that thirty something thousand to raise an altar. I accepted it with all my heart. Prayed for her, and I gave it back to her. I said, go and put it in the capital, and report back to me in one month. And you know what I want to do? I know what I want to do. By the time she brings back in one month, I will be able to know what she has done. Now, what I have given her, 31,000 plus the 27,000 she's using. So, she's going to be buying card more than 
50 something thousand so she can have afford to buy a card of 70,000 every day and sell it and make the profit. Meanwhile, somebody is there who has 70,000 in the bank and is looking for 200,000.